What is up, everybody? Today we'll be covering tuberculosis, and this is going to be an interesting um, disease to learn about. So fun fact, if you are watching this on YouTube or like watching it as part of the course, you guys are going to see I have a picture up here, and it's of um, a bunch of Victorian age women taking care of somebody dying from tuberculosis. And here's a fun fact that I learned from somebody who's a historian off of TikTok, that tuberculosis used to be called consumption. And so so in the like 1800s kind of era, Victorian age, um, what would happen is they would take pictures or paintings of all these women wasting away from tuberculosis because it affected um, younger women in like a disproportionate amount, even though like nowadays we realize it affects pretty much anybody. Um but they take pictures of these women wasting away and that became a beauty standard. So that's why people started having their corsets tighter and tighter and tighter to look like they were wasting away from tuberculosis because everyone thought this was pretty. Isn't that crazy? Wild. Anyways, fun facts. So we'll move on to what we need to know for the boards now. That's just a fun, you know, party trick that you can use later. So tuberculosis, let's get into it. So as we know, mostly affects the lungs as we're talking about this. You think tuberculosis, you think somebody's coughing up a lung, like getting real bloody sputum everywhere. That's like what your first thought is. So tuberculosis, like most of the time, if we're talking about it, it affects the lungs. It can affect other parts of the body. You'll see this show up a lot more often in um, more underdeveloped countries where you'll see it in the spine a lot. So it'll end up happening in um, it's tuberculosis in the spine. It's the same bacteria. It's mycobacterium tuberculosis. Um, but it'll end up in the spine. It can also affect the kidneys and it can affect the brain. So with that being said, um, not a fun condition, but yes, mostly will affect the lungs. And as I said before, it's going to be a specific type of bacteria. So it's called mycobacterium tuberculosis. That is a strain of bacteria. And again, as any other type of bacteria, it is contracted by coming in direct contact with somebody who has an active infection of the disease. So the thing with tuberculosis is you can be positive for tuberculosis and not be contagious. So this is called having latent tuberculosis. So some of you guys might have gone for your PPD testing as shown down below. You got the little PPD placed in your arm to see if you had tuberculosis or not. And uh, some of you, it might have actually turned this funky reddish kind of color or honestly some people just report that it like really really burns and it starts turning like funky colors and turns like purple and blue and whatnot um anything other than it just like fades to nothing is considered a positive sign for the pbd test so you would have to go get a chest x-ray to see if you have latent tuberculosis and i'll show you what that chest x-ray looks like here soon um just for reference this picture here is what a normal chest x-ray looks like um so you can reference that picture as we look at the new one um but again here's the thing if you have latent tuberculosis that means like maybe you had tuberculosis like 20 years ago like my best friend's mom she is a doctor so she had tuberculosis from working in the hospital which is an occupational hazard of how you can end up getting tuberculosis um and so she uh, has to get a chest x-ray every time that she needs to get her PPD tested to make sure they can see that the um, nodules that are in the lungs that form because of tuberculosis, they're called blebs, it's weird, um, but they will form in the lungs and you just have to see that there is a basically a little... It's like a little fuzzy thing around it. Here, I'll just show you the picture. It's like a little fuzzy thing that goes around it. That shows that the tuberculosis is now latent and it's not going to infect the body anymore. So people who um, have latent tuberculosis, they are totally fine. You don't need the airborne precautions. You don't need to wear the like, you know, N95 mask or anything like that. You're good to go. They're just one of the mill people. They're just going to pop positive on a PPD. But as long as they're not in an active like coughing up along. You can tell they're like actively diseased. They're good to go. So the boards might ask you about that. Someone who has latent tuberculosis, what precautions do you take with them? Just wash your hands. Just wash your hands. That's about it. Um, and again, as I said before, a lot of more underdeveloped countries either like don't regularly screen for tuberculosis like how we do in the United States, or they don't actively have the TB vaccine available. Um, there is a tuberculosis vaccine available. Um that you can take and it's to you know for people who like have very very high you know pulmonologists will do this just to make sure that they don't um, end up getting tb from the amount of patients that they end up seeing so that is another reason where you would get tuberculosis if you travel to one of these foreign countries let's say you were doing like either missionary work or you know free clinic work or whatnot you came in contact with some people who had tuberculosis or even just visiting 
just being around, um, then you might end up contracting it. So again, you're around someone who's actively infected, you can get it. Anyways, so if it affects the other body part. So I'd mentioned before, it can affect the brain, the kidneys, the spine. Essentially, you will have symptoms in that area that just indicate that something's wrong with that area. So like you have an infection of bacteria in the brain, you might see that they start getting altered mental status and stuff like that. Like they start getting agitated, confused and stuff like that. Um, Kidneys, you'll have problems with your urine output 100% because that's what the kidneys do, filter the blood to make urine. And then if you have it in your spine, you're going to end up with back pain. So that's another um, way people will end up getting tuberculosis is that they'll go to a foreign country. There'll be some like, you know, kid who's got tuberculosis of their spine and they might not realize it. And they're coming in thinking it's back pain. So you're helping them out with their back pain. Turns out it's tuberculosis. They're coughing on you. You get sick. You get tuberculosis. And that's one of the ways you can end up getting this um, because it really does show up a lot. Like tuberculosis of the spine is like really common in a lot of other countries. Um, Not so much in the U.S. We'll see it mostly in the lungs, but um, it can progress to other parts such as the spine. Uh, But since it typically affects the lungs, these are the things that you're going to see. And this is what the boards is going to ask you about. So again, a cough that lasts for a while, like three plus weeks, just not going away. Um, Fever and chills. So like typical like infection signs of fever, chills, sweat, all that stuff pretty run in the mill. Um, this is another thing, bloody sputum. So if you see any time a patient's coughing up blood, that's called hemoptysis. And it's generally not a good sign and should be checked out because you should not be coughing up blood. Um, again, as with any per- infection, body aches. And then because it's mostly the lungs, you're going to have that chest pain. Uh, a lot of that also stems from coughing excessively and all the inflammation that's going on in there. Sorry. And then you'll have painful lymph nodes as well. So like, again, similar with any sort of infection, that's why a lot of times people will have trouble swallowing um, because it's painful. So that would make them like, you know, not want to eat anything. So you'll see weight loss due to a decreased appetite. Um, Sometimes it is because of those lymph nodes. Sometimes it's just because a lot of people, if they're sick, they don't want to eat. So that's what you'll see as well. Generally, any sort of rapid unexplained weight loss is a red flag because it could indicate, you know, infection or cancer or something bad like that. Um, Again, you'll see all of the symptoms of a low uh, SpO2 value. So under 90. Um, So any sort of hypoxic kind of condition. So you'll see that you might see clubbing of the digits. So you might see the digits start to um, get really big and fat. That's what that clubbing is. I believe I talked about it in the COPD video, possibly. Um, It's in another video where I show a picture of that. If you just Google clubbing fingers, you'll see it. Um, So that's what you might also see with these patients. And then, you know, on the SPO2 monitor, it kind of makes sense. It's a lung condition. So it makes sense why you can't, you know, perforate, sorry, not perforate, um, perfuse oxygen into the tissues. And that, If you're going to use your um, little stethoscope and listen to the lungs, you're going to definitely hear abnormal lung sounds. You might hear like a pleural friction rub from the inflammation from the tuberculosis. You might hear crackles from all like fluid buildup and everything that's happening. You might hear um, adventitious lung sounds or consolidation. Those might be other words the boards uses, which is just fancy words for gunk. Makes sense. There's just gunk in there. Um, So obviously the lungs are infected. There's a problem with them. You're going to hear abnormal breath sounds. And as I said before, this picture is how it will look when it's latent tuberculosis, where you have like a little thing, not there, but like here. And then they, these little dots here, that's all the little, um, tuberculosis being contained. So what happens is the body will go and just put this whole, like, you know, little shell around it and contain it. I like to think of it as it's like, it takes like a little like pac-man like a little pac-man like little goat like you know the little pac-man pac-man it'll basically go and it'll just envelop it and just go oh and then hold it in and so what it does is just build a barrier so like the tuberculosis is still in there but like it's like on lockdown it just goes like this is the little tuberculosis it just goes oh and holds it in and that's what latent tuberculosis is and that's the best way i can describe it so um, how are we treating it? Very similar to a lot of other pulmonary um, conditions working on breathing, endurance, B12, 
VO2 max, making sure the patient's able to um, complete an activity without desatting and stuff like that. Uh, but the big thing for tuberculosis is this is one of our major airborne precautions um, patients. So if you guys have not watched the video on precautions, I would definitely watch that because it will definitely help you figure out like what you need and what you don't need. Um, typical for that is going to be, you know, N95 mask, gloves, goggles, you know, the eye protection, everything. Um, sometimes gown, uh, it really just depends, but you can also wear like the respirator kind of thing. Um, you can wear a specific, you know, anti-pressure suits, uh, they'll have to be in a negative pressure room as well. And with the door closed, so they can't leave. They can't leave. So, um, pharmacological management for this patient, they will be on an antibiotic for up to like two weeks for about two weeks. And so they'll do that two-week course of antibiotics, and they should be good after that um, to be considered not contagious anymore. Although there are some strains of mycobacterium tuberculosis that are um, antibiotic resistant, which makes it a little bit more complicated. But again, in the latent phase, uh, they will continue to test positive for this P for the PPD test on their arm. So they'll have to get the chest X-ray, so then they can make sure they see that little, you know enveloping of the tuberculosis so then they know that okay it's contained it's not you know active right now um and you can be have latent tuberculosis for years it can reignite itself what they notice is with and this won't be on the boards because they haven't talked about it yet but they have noticed that like people with covid um they'll end up getting infected with covid and then that will basically reignite their um tuberculosis and then that's kind of what's going on with that so not ideal but um Again, same thing as pretty much any other pulmonary condition, working on oxygen perforation to the tissue, so breathing techniques, energy conservation techniques, improving VO2 max. They're working with an incentive spirometer, so that's this thing over here, to help improve you know, lung volumes and the ability for the lungs to work efficiently. So that's pretty much what's going on. And then you'll do, you know, run of the mill cardio with this patient because you're trying to get them, you know, up and running so then they're not getting out of breath, like just vacuuming the living room. So key words for this is if you see mycobacterium tuberculosis, you know we're talking about tuberculosis. If you see latent, understand that this is one of the only conditions where we would talk about a latent infection. So that just means like it's dormant. It's like sitting there menacingly, basically. It's just waiting for its opportunity to, you know, reinfect the body. But it can stay latent for years and years and years. Like someone can get tuberculosis once and then never get it again. Somebody could get it in their 20s and then get reinfected in their 50s. It's crazy. Again, airborne precautions, as I said before, um, if you have bloody sputum, hemoptysis happening, uh, definitely not ideal. If you have that cough lasting for three weeks, um, the occupational hazards, such as being a healthcare worker, working in the hospital, that's a good way to get tuberculosis, um, or living in a foreign country where you would be exposed to tuberculosis as a, at a much higher rate than just interacting with the general population. Um Another thing I want to add in is that sometimes this can spread really easily in a uh, very um, close quarters community. So like prisons and stuff like that, or, um, you know, homeless shelters and uh, homeless population as well. Uh, just people living very, very close quarters together with um, subpar hygiene, basically. So that's why you'll see this um, in a lot of those um, populations. So let's go to the sample question. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient in the hospital with tuberculosis. Which of the following would not be appropriate to don when treating this patient? One, N95 mask. Two, gloves. Three, goggles. Or four, surgical mask. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, so the answer is going to be a surgical mask. So the surgical mask is okay for like droplet precautions. However, it's not okay for airborne precautions. You need to have a mask with a seal on it. The surgical masks do not have a seal on it. So therefore the particles can still get through. So that's why you would need a specialized fitted N95 mask. Um, or you would need, you know, the respirator or some sort of negative pressure suit, something that's got a seal that's not going to let any sort of particles in. And you have to make sure you're fitted for that. Gloves, obviously, and goggles will be a part of our airborne precautions as well. So make sure that you understand that um, not everybody will wear goggles. 
um, but a surgical mask is not enough protection. Okay. So it's like, which one of these would not be appropriate to don when treating this patient? Do not be get, putting on a surgical mask. It is not enough. You need the N95 mask, you need gloves, goggles are ideal. So that's why you'll need those. So I hope that this was helpful in explaining tuberculosis and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.